So in this video we're thinking about burn zones, the areas of the burn. And the first area we want to consider is the area where there's actually necrosis and death of tissue. Now in this area there's been coagulation. Coagulation zone. Where the tissues have actually been killed, necrosed, coagulated. And they're lost, the proteins are, are denatured. But round about that, we have another zone where the circulation has been inhibited, but the tissues have not been killed. And this is called the stasis or the zone of stasis. Where the blood supply is, is reduced, but the tissue is still viable. And round about that, we've got another zone here where there's been uh, some insult to the tissues. There's inf inflammation in this area. So this is the zone of, uh, and in inflammation, of course, we get redness, the um, hyperemia. So that's the zone of hyperemia. So we have these uh, distinct zones. These are three dimensional, of course. They go into the depth of the burn as well as round about the, uh, the side to side direction. So it's a three dimensional burn. So coagulation is dead, zone of stasis, reduced blood supply, zone of hyperemia. And uh, we need to think about the implications of this. So um, This model of uh, burn pathophysiology, so burns. We're really thinking about the pathophysiology of burns. And, and this uh, three-stage model is based on the work of Jackson, who published way back in 1947. Um, Douglas Jackson, the uh, English um, research plastic surgeon. So we've got the uh, area of coagulation. the coagulated area where the proteins have denatured. Proteins are lost, the area is necrosed. So here we've got dead cells and tissues. They, uh, they can't be recovered. No recovery possible. So this really is the, is the primary injury. And the size of the injury is going to depend on the heat of the object it came into contact with and the duration of that contact, as we would expect. Now the next zone is the zone of stasis. Now this zone of stasis here, just remind ourselves of the original diagram. So the coagulation zone and the zone of stasis. So the coagulation zone we did in green, and the zone of stasis we did in this orange colour. Right, now this, this zone of stasis is, is kind of up for grabs as it were, um, because this is an area of reduced perfusion. Not no perfusion like this where everything's dead. There's reduced perfusion in this stasis zone. And that means there's a risk of necrosis. But if we can reverse the ischemia, if we can reduce the ischemia, then this tissue can remain viable. And this makes a huge difference because it means that the final burn, if we lose this area, will be that size. Whereas if this area can be salvaged, we're only going to get a burn of that size. Only the coagulation zone itself will be the final uh, area of burn injury and this explains why it's so important locally and systemically to increase perfusion of this area of stasis round about the burn and that will maintain oxygen and the perfusion will also bring nutrition because burns are very energy requiring wounds to heal. They need a lot of energy to heal. So we want to keep this area 
Well, once once it's been um, once all the heat's gone out of the burn after the first aid situation, we want to keep that actually relatively warm to increase the perfusion. And of course, it means we need to prevent systemic hypoperfusion. We need to keep the patient well hydrated, plenty of fluids on board, keep the blood circulation going round this area of stasis. And then that area should not necrose. We should retain that area. We can salvage it. But it is up for grabs. It, part, it largely depends on the management, how well the area is managed. Then the final area, the area of hyperemia. In the States, of course, you don't have that A as we do in the UK. The area of hyperemia. Now this is where there's an inflammatory reaction. So th th this really is an inflammatory zone. There's hyperemia because of the vasodilation as a result of the effect of the inflammatory cytokines. And in the diagram we drew that as red. So the inflammatory zone, actually an area of uh, increased perfusion. Now there's still probably a degree of tissue in zone because we've had an inflammatory response. But here we do expect a full recovery of this tissue. And we would normally expect that to recover. Um, unless uh, things that can damage it like sepsis, if the patient becomes systemically septic, or, or this area becomes very ischemic. Th th then it can be lost if the blood supply is greatly reduced in ischemia. So that's basically the Jackson model, the coagulation necrosis zone, the stasis zone and the hyperemia zone. And the reason it's so important is because although the coagulation zone is lost, we can't get that back, that's all dead. We can retain the integrity and the perfusion of the zone of stasis. So all this area here can be saved the tissue can remain viable, will not necrose, therefore no healing will be required. As long as we maintain good perfusion, oxygenation and nutrition of that area. And unless we're very unfortunate, this area would expect full recovery, the inflammatory zone, unless we're very hypoperfused, very ischemic, or, or the patient becomes uh, septic.